この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Dororo, episode 10. Last time on Dororo, backstory and a bit of intrigue. Big chunk of backstory on Dororo himself and his family, or herself, there. That was another big thing in the episode. Dororo herself and family and death of parents, and it was sad. And then the other family,、uh, Hyakimaru's dad, and by extension, his brother, who was watching from, from the shadows, if you will, has been made aware that there is a young man running around with prosthetic arms killing people. And I believe he suspects that his son has survived. So, what's that going to lead to? I have no idea, but I am. Excited to find out. And then Hyakimaru has discovered that Dororo is female.、Uh, so we'll see if anything plays out of that.、Uh, Dororo kind of grilled him at the end of the episode as to whether the nun had said anything about that, and Hyakimaru remained silent. So it shouldn't make much difference, but, but maybe it'll have an impact. I don't know. Let's get into the episode and find out. There will be multiple versions as usual. You can find picture in picture versions with the video up here, down there in the description, and the timer based version with any run through, discussion, frame by frames, whatever, at the end of the timer based version on YouTube, which will contain a beep beep timer, which will go boop 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 beep, and on the beep in the green light, that will be the same frame that the video starts playing on my screen. So if you're playing along with your own media, probably when you want to hit the button. Okay? Okay. Beep beep timer goes here. Twin engine. Vroom vroom. Ooh, that's pretty. I like this purplish mistiness. It's pretty. Oh. Shipwreck? Doesn't look like the sea though, it looks like a lake. Okay. Where'd your leg go? How are you swimming so hard? Uh oh. Is there a ghoul demon underwater? I'm gonna guess there's a ghoul demon underwater. Is it a demon shark? Please let it be a demon shark with lasers. Oh shit. Oh. Uh oh. That's not a demon shark. That's much worse. I don't, think, I don't think it's going to live this and, and you got eaten. Well, rip that dude. How are you going to fight something underwater? Shit. Is that the brother? I'm not sure. 
green rice patties. So either this is somewhere else or this is the past. Oh, they're starting to, okay. They're starting to brown. Resource for. Hmm. Well, you do, Papa Maru. Okay, so this is present time. Present day. Present time. Yes. Those are the two homies, right? Yeah. What's the mission? She's still praying to the headless statue. Papa Maru going to the Hall of Hell. Yeah. Not, not a baby anymore. Shattering some demons. Yes. Nah. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe they will answer. Nani? Oh. Oh. Showing him... The truth in the smoke, I guess. The boy's alive and he knows what he looks like. Ruh -roh. Okay. Just killing ghouls. It's kind of what I do. Huh? That is kind of amazing. Words, speech. Mm -hmm. I don't think he knows. But if he runs into Tahomaro's two underlings, they might have the seal on them. And he might find out. Okay, who's this guy? Midwife got eight. Because mm. he got a big brother. Oh. 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 Hey, a pops. Hmm. 
Mm, you, ha- you got a brother. Is he your brother? Ooh. He's putting it together. Shit. <laughs> That just makes him more curious. He's not going to let this go. Now you fucked up. Now you have fucked up. You have fucked up now. Ooh, Purdy. Ooh, Purdy. Is that the same lake? Where the thing ate the dude? Will Hyaki save his brother? That could be interesting. Oh, backstory time. Quick backstory time. Nice. I think you are. Hmm. What's this commotion about? Begging to kill the demon? Yeah. Ow, it's underwater. This is a different monster. Wait, why are you going out on the water? Bruh. Yeah, so let's go out in little tiny flimsy boats and see if we get eaten. Dumb as fuck. Mm. Good luck. Yeah, that's your brother's job. Interesting. My respect for Tahomaru just went up. I thought he was kind of a brat, but he actually cares about his people. You might have to. Let it begin. Oh, shit. What is it? Yeah, probably. Oh, oh, there was a plan. Okay, that's a pretty good plan. (laughs) 
Is it anchored in place? Oh. Oh, it's a crab. Again, good luck, buddy. Okay. Well. Oh, he's uh, he's doing pretty well. I don't think that killed it. Yeah. New strategy. Need a new plan. What you gonna do? Try to bait it out. So you want to suicide bomb the giant crab. Ah, uh, he needs ya. Huh? Oh. They're- Oh, that's a boy. <laughs> oh! I thought- I thought that was a girl. Whoops. Lesson learned. Do not assume genders in Duro. Demons. Yeah, but with demons. Yeah, but when you do, will the crops fail? Will the rain stop coming? Will the floods come back? back ride woo <laughs> yay ah <laughs> uh, baited into that little uh little fjord okay but with what or drive it in What you building? A seawall? A canal? Oh, a canal with a lock. It's a hell of an engineering feat to pull off rather quickly. Tomaru's got some stuff. 
Hey, Krabby Buddy. Bait. That's some Star Platinum shit. Gotcha. Nani? Ah, drain it. Yep. Very clever. I like it. Mm-hmm. It's going pretty smoothly. Eh. Going really smoothly. Not too smoothly, I hope. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh. Uh oh. Kill it quickly or get the fuck out of there. How are you going to guard it? Yeah, it's over. This is an awesome scene. Saving as many as he can. Oh, he just chucked that guy. With one hand. Bruh. Oh. Oh, no. Don't tell me we're gonna lose one. I've grown to like them. Oh! He is gonna save him! Holy fucking shit. Yaki is Aki. But he just caught a flash of him. Okay, okay, okay. Things are heating up. This is getting spicy. Oh, no, he's still there. Okay, okay. Eh? Just somebody that you used to know. Oh, he's got the, the thing with the, the mark. So it's not Doro finding out, it's Hyaki finding out. I mean, it's blah, 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 it's neither. It's not Hyaki finding out, it's to Tahomaru finding out. Was that another one? I guess not. We didn't see a demon chatter. Ooh. I like this chant. Yo! Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I can dig it.
Interesting. Bakemonogani. Uh, is Gani crab? Not finding it. Don't know. Doesn't really matter. Monster crab? Probably something along those lines. In any case. What a fascinating episode. And a very pretty one. Um, a lot of, a lot of landscape shots that really stood out to me. But I think, I think the standout for this episode was changing our, or at least my, perspective on Tahomaru, because he's been a bit of a brat before, and I was expecting him to be a, a major antagonist, and not a very deep one, just from the way he was played up until this point. Now, he could still be an antagonistic force toward Hyakimaru, given that he's he's the younger son, and has been raised as though he's the only son, and so he would feel feel weird about finding out that he's got an older brother and the whole thing with the father. But what we saw from Tahumaru in this episode was the makings of a good leader, the makings of a, a good chieftain, if you will. He shows care for his people, responds to their requests, has a strategic mind, comes up with a basic strategy, not even knowing what he's going to fight, just anchoring the boats to the trees. If they hadn't done that, they would have all been swallowed up by the, uh, the whirlpool, most likely. And then once he understands his opponent, he comes up with a bigger, better plan, puts everyone to work, gets it done efficiently, uh, uses, demonstrates serious engineering skill for the time, the, the sluices to create what is essentially a, a, a dry dock or a canal, and executes almost flawlessly. I mean, if, if not for the unexpected of the crab grabbing giant boulders and throwing them at one of the sluices, it would have been a perfect plan. So, Tahomaru got some, some serious respect points in this episode, and just became a lot more interesting, because he is anything but a shallow individual. He's got, well, as I said, he's got he's got leadership skills. He cares for his people. He cares for his direct subordinates. Um, the the two who offered to off themselves to to suicide bomb the crab. He was like, no, no, no. We'll figure out a better way. I'm not going to lose you. I need you. But he's also got this um, this pride in who he is and and in his father's accomplishments, which is perhaps misplaced. So I see I see sort of two routes for this to go. Uh, route one is that, that Tahomaru becomes, or remains an antagonistic force. He ends up being the hunter, hunting, and we, we've seen him as a hunter before, chasing things down. So I was kind of expecting that to be his role, to find out that Takimaru exists and to go and chase him via a, a constant force in the background. Chasing Yaki. That's that's a possibility. The other possibility is that he finds out in in my head at least, this is just just guesses, is that he finds out what's up from Yaki Maru, that they actually have a conversation, mostly one sided, in the next episode. Although Yaki doesn't even know Oh, it's so interesting. Yaki doesn't know who he is or where he's from. All he has is this little amulet that he's always had. The little pouch thing. It's all, it's all he has to link him to the, the family. But Tahumaru has the information that he needs to understand who Hyakimaru is. If he gets up close to him, he's going to know. Interesting. Really interesting. So I guess the question is whether they become allies or foils. 
because they could operate as really effective foils for one another. Even in their in their character designs, that's built in. Um, they have similar cloaks, but almost opposite colors and very different symbols. Uh, Tahumaru's are swirls, and Hyakimaru's are well, they're. Uh, where's that scene at the end? Yeah. Okay. So Tahumaru, he's red, wh white on red, with swirls on the white and Hyaki is like black on black on black with where's where's Hyaki where are you buddy I know you're here somewhere yeah with black on black on black with white like spade things very sharp and pointy I don't know if these symbols have some meaning. Let me know if they do. Or are they anchors? I don't know. I don't know what they are. Yeah, their their character designs are... Potentially interesting. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. I'm not going to dwell on that too much. Okay. Um, so, will they become allies or foils? Or neither? Previously, I would have hands down said, said foils are enemies. Now I'm not so sure. Now, the other thing that could happen is if, if, if Tahumaru finds out the truth about his father and the reasons for their previous success and, and the wealth of the land um he could go two routes with that information one would be to follow up on the pride that he expressed in this episode and try to eliminate hyakimaru so that the prosperity comes back and then the other would be disgust at his father's actions and his, his father's willingness to kill his own son uh, or trade his body parts and potentially allying with hyakimaru in getting them back with the knowledge that doing so will will harm the land this is super interesting there's there there are so many ways that this could go and it'll probably be something i completely do not expect okay so this this first scene is just gorgeous um I love the color palette, the sort of sunset or sunrise hues, I'm not sure which, with the the orangey glow fading into this purpley mistiness and the same on on the lake with the 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 horizon line directly in the center of the frame and the the mountains mirrored in the water but hazy. I really like this shot. And I love the way that the the light plays on the mountaintops. So there's this spillover of the orangey light on the the tops of these mountains here. And then they fade off into watercolory hues in the distance. Really love this shot. And then it goes into showing us the baddie. Pretty, 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 pretty. You're not pretty, though. You're real ugly. Looks like it's got a nose here. Real ugly. Okay. OP. And the story of Tahomaru. So this is present day, present time, and the rice is still okay, but it's going brown. And I just didn't didn't click for me that this is the the first signs of the most prosperous area starting to die. The drought's been going on for a while, and now it's getting it's getting serious. Yeah, and that one that one little bead of sweat. Oh shit! What's going on? Okay. Everything's going wrong. The rice is, the harvest is, is in jeopardy. Your neighbors are planning a war. Shit's bad. And your son suspects. I like the way that this, this post in this shot um, consistently represents space. 
as he turns to face his his uh, homies. I really thought that this one in the white and red garb was female. I really thought he had a male and a female companion. Nope. They're brothers. <laughs> okay. And mom praying to the statue. Papa goes to the Hall of Hell, asks for some answers, and he gets them. Through sizzling smoke, he sees three images. Baby boy, little boy, big boy. I see. <laughs> now he gets it. We quickly cut over to show what Yaki and Dororo are up to. They're practically minor players in this episode, which is really interesting. Um, bathing, cleaning off the, the blood. Full sea brooms, di dried abalones, manju steamed buns. And there's a lot of focus on this amulet. He doesn't take it off even to bathe. And I believe that the rice from uh, Mio? From Mio is inside that pouch now. So that's what he's holding on to, I think. Dororo questions the family seal. We also get a, a good look at the the blades, which have a tang on them, um, which makes it seem like they are actually repurposed for this and were intended to be uh, actual sword blades, but unknown how the mechanics of his arm sword things work. Eh. Well, you can just hand wave it. Also unknown how he bends his elbows. Because she's, like, amputated at the shoulders, right? So is there a, like, system of intricate machinery in there to pull from his shoulder to, like, make his arms move? And what about his hands? How does that work? Eh, hand wave it. Okay. Okay, we grabbed this guy, drugged him, got a semi, semi-effective truth, truth serum... This guy is so loyal that he tries to bite his own tongue off, but he's too weak to actually do it. And Talmaro kind of takes this in stride. And he goes and he... He asks his dad. And then we get this really great cut, really slow turn here. And it's just a partial turn. He doesn't actually finish the motion in this cut. We cut away. I really like this. Um, it actually reminds me of a couple of cuts from Legend of the Galactic Heroes. I'm not sure how I feel about the background movement at this point. Oh, we're taking steps. We're directly from Tahumaru's perspective. Oh, it just got better. And then we immediately cut to back and forth, back and forth. And then he's facing him and yelling and a face of rage. Very anger. Much unhappy. Alright. So off he runs. The homies find him, because of course they do. And he used to run here, which is interesting. And this little mini flashback. I guess setting up their importance to him. Tahomaru meaning. Huh, I don't know. Okay. I was just wondering if it had a, a specific easy to understand meaning. Uh runs into some soldiers at the village is begged for help because the monster... Well, actually, they don't even beg him for help. Do they? Oh, yes, they do. Please save us. Okay, okay, okay. So it is a direct request from his people, and he takes it. Fine, I will defeat it for you. His soldiers are like, Nah, dude, there's no way this is true, and you shouldn't be fighting monsters. 
And then we get this. My people aren't lying. They're suffering. Are you telling me to leave them? Care for his populace. Interesting. Somewhat unexpected. I don't know why that's unexpected. I just kind of assumed that, that Tahumaru was sort of cold. But I was wrong. I'm glad to be. Makes him a much more interesting character. The homies are the homies. So we go on the boats. The ore is stuck. The whirlpool begins. The real spooky crab monster thing. Tahumaru already had a plan in motion. Ropes. Pretty smart. I'm somewhat confused as to what happened to that guy. I guess the arrows in the claw caused it to release him, and he just dropped into the water in front of it. In any case, I don't think we ever see him again. But he didn't get nommed, so that's good. Tomar chops off a claw, do some other minor damage, and it gets away. So, time to regroup. Oh, right, it gets away and then it starts uh, stabbing boats. Pretty neat. We get home. Time to regroup. Think of a plan. They come up with one plan, and he dismisses it, although it's a viable option. Carry some explosives? Suicide bomb him. No, the people are too valuable. Specifically, you two are too valuable. I know you would follow me to the, the, the depths of hell, right? But, nah. And then we get another very interesting scene that could feed into Tahumaru's, or our, our understanding of Tahumaru's motivations. Mountains are green, the streams are flowing, everything's awesome. It wasn't like this before. This is my father's doing, and I am proud of it. Who made this land so rich? Papa. Yeah. <laughs> but how'd he do it? <laughs> and here we go. I am his son. I will defeat any measly monster with my own two hands. Good luck. What I need you to do is not to die. This is a pretty cool speech. This is like a protagonist speech. Or a misguided but but ideologically convinced antagonist speech. One or the other. And well let's be real here. Who's the antagonist here? It depends on your moral system. Because Or, or the protagonist, however you want to see it. Because, yes, Daigo did a bad by selling his son's body parts to a bunch of demons. We, we understand that, like, making deals with devils is probably not a good idea. But at the same time, he sacrificed one for the prosperity of how many thousands of people live in his lands? And have been existing relatively peacefully with plenty of food for, what, 15 years or so? How does that balance out in the scales of justice? Is one boy worth thousands of starving kids? Probably. Depends on your, your system of, of... Depends on your moral system. Likewise, is getting is one boy getting his body parts back worth causing indirectly causing the starvation of thousands of people and wars to brew and spring up? Depends on your moral system. If you're a utilitarian, you leave you leave Yakimaru in the boat and let him die.
Interesting. Gosh, this makes the second really interesting uh, episode of today. Mob Psycho episode 10 also uh, brought a potentially really interesting ideological conflict to the fore. And this episode brings up really interesting ideological conflict to the fore. I'm excited. I'm excited. I love when shows are good. <laughs> All right. So he, he sees the fjord, comes up with his idea. We are not let in on what he's doing, but we see that everyone else is working their asses off to make it happen. So this shows some execution skills on his part. He's able to rally all of these villagers and get them working. Of course, it's for their own benefit, but he's still able to get it to get it done. You know, he's the foreman on the, on the blah blah the foreman on this project. So they bait the crab in with the boat and slam the door, and then drain the other side. Brilliant. Now it's on land, it does a screech thing, he goes and he fights, there's some, some nice looking stuff, that looks pretty nice, but it doesn't look nearly as nice, and then I, I, I was like, damn, this is going way too well, <laughs> this is going way too well, oh, okay, it can pick up rocks and throw them at the, at the gate, and it does, and then shit gets really good. So he anchors himself with his sword. Don't know if the physics of that makes sense, but that's fine. Uh, rushing water looks great. People being being pulled away by it looks great. This guy just grabbing people and flinging them. <laughs> Got one guy's one guy's collar in his mouth, the other guy in one arm. He's just one handedly flinging them. How many feet is it from from there to to the edge to the riverbank where he throws them? Like twenty feet. He just throws him. Picks him up out of the water. <laughs> That's really difficult. So, he's a strong boy. <laughs> a very strong boy. And uh, we get some, some nice tension build. Is he going to get nommed here? And then suddenly, a familiar figure. Shwing! And to an extent, they fight together. I thought, I thought Hyakimaru was just going to be gone, right? But no, he's still just chilling here. Who are you? Don't you wish you knew? And what I wonder is whether he saw that. Because we don't see his reaction to it. Did he see the symbol of their father, of their family? We get the, 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 the help place. I don't think an another statue has been split, so I don't think this crab was a demon carrying one of his body parts, but I could be wrong. And we get some, some shots of Papa, Hell, and Mama sort of bringing everything together, creating some wonder. Straight into the ED. This was a knockout episode. In my book, at least. I'm really excited. I'm really excited! I hope that we get more focus on Tahumaru and we develop his character further. I assume that we will. I can't see the next episode focusing on anything but the interaction between him and Hyaki. Fuck yes. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to wrap it up. Let's do a shill stuff. Uh, oh, no. Let's do a shill stuff real quick. If you liked the video, go ahead and do that. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. It's all good. Uh, let me know in the comments why, and then maybe I can improve it. If you're not subbed and you want more, maybe do that. And if you are subbed and you're not getting my videos, maybe the bell can help. It's a lot of maybes. And the second shill stuff paper pal fell, but... Uh, if you really like this content or want to support this dude who makes it, you can head over to patreon.com slash for early access to a bunch of my vids and a fly and other stuff. So check that out if you want to. Okay, well, I have been Tiaboo. This has been Dororo, episode 10. 
I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope to catch you in the next one next Monday. Peace.